Hello my friends, today we are gonna play a game, and not just any game, we are gonna play a NASA game. It's called Solar Trictionary. How well do you know your own sun? Test your knowledge by picking out the correct definition for different science terms about the sun. For each term there will be four definitions, only one will be correct. Pick the correct definition for all ten terms and you will become a certified Space Place Sun Champion! That's what I wanna be. Let's play. What is a corona? Is it a plastic hair accessory used to create a large bun on the top of the head? Or is it the ancient Greek goddess of carbonated beverages? A woman who practices magic? Or is it the outermost layer of the sun, which become visible during a total eclipse when the moon covers the sphere of the sun. Nah, that can be it. The moon is fake, man. The moon is a hoax. I think it's a woman who practices magic, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, it's wrong. I should have known that NASA still believes in the moon. Before we move on to the next question, I have an important message. I would like to thank NASA for all the science they have done. If it wasn't for them, I would not have a computer right now. Thank you for all those satellites that supply me with internet. Thank you so much NASA. Let's move on. What is the heliosphere? A three-dimensional round sculpture painted with a mixture of pigment and beeswax? Uh, I don't think so. An antibiotic taken orally for ringworm? What the fuck NASA? The region of space under the sun's influence, which ends where the solar wind meets the interstellar wind? Or a revolving stone disk used for grinding polishing or sharpening tools. I don't know what to take. Let's go for the propaganda answer. Let's take answer 3. Yay, it's correct. It's time for another important message. Two kids have launched a cat into space. They managed to do it without harming the cat. Okay, let's go to the next question. What is a solar cycle? A small solar powered two wheeled scooter? Or the time it takes for a student to forget about homework when the sun comes out? <laughs> oh, NASA, that's funny. Uh, the repeated behavior of the sun in which every 11 years its activity level builds up to a maximum, then it settles back down to a minimum? Mm, that can be the answer, because, you know, the people who ever looked into the actual data that comes from the NASA satellites that track the sun, they all know there is supposed to be a solar maximum and a solar minimum, but the problem is that the data doesn't show that. So-called scientists are even inventing terms like solar minimum maximum because there are too much solar flares when there are not supposed to be solar flares. And then the last answer, a ferris wheel built to look like the sun. I think that's it. Let's go for the last answer. Oh look, NASA is wrong again. Let's take another short break. How to Land on a Comet, presented by Science at NASA. Generally speaking, space missions fall into one of three categories. Difficult, more difficult, and ridiculously difficult. Flybys are difficult. A spaceship travels hundreds of millions of miles through the dark void of space, pinpoints a distant planet or moon, and flies past it at 20 to 30,000 miles per hour, snapping pictures furiously during an achingly brief encounter. Going into orbit is more difficult. Instead of flying past its target, the approaching spaceship breaks changing its velocity by just the right amount to circle the planet. One wrong move and the spacecraft bounces off, becoming an unintended meteor. Landing is ridiculously difficult. 
Just play NASA's 7 Minutes of Terror video. Watching Curiosity parachute, retro rocket, and sky crane its way to the surface of Mars rarely fails to produce goosebumps. Next question. What is a transit? A special ticket that allows you to travel to another dimension. Oh, fuck this. Let's take answer one. Wrong again, of course. Let's take another break. On the International Space Station, we do a lot of research and science in a lot of various domains. For example, we do science in biology or we do fluid science uh, experiments as well because fluids, of course, in microgravity, they behave completely different. So it's very interesting to see and to get fundamental knowledge about it. But we also have furnaces on orbit to do, for example, material science and to make new kind of materials or to study them at least. We have here, for example, the uh, microgravity science glove box. In this glove box, we can do uh, experiments with materials that would otherwise be toxic for uh, the astronauts. So we do a lot of experiments in here uh, as well. Uh, we have a human physiology laboratory on which we do experiments on ourselves. So almost every domain of science that you can think of here on Earth, we can also perform on board of the International Space Station. But we don't only do science, we also do technology. For example, technology around water recycling. As you know, water is very important for our health, also here on Earth. And it's also here on Earth a scarce resource. About one billion people do not have access to clean drinking water. On orbit it's also scarce and astronauts also need clean drinking water to stay healthy. But since it's scarce, we do a lot of recycling. 70 to 80% of our water on orbit is recycled. Even, for example, our urine is recycled. So, the coffee we drank yesterday is the same that we drink today and will be the same that we drink tomorrow. And not only we drink our own coffee, we also drink the coffee of our crewmates. One billion people without access to drinking water. And NASA brags about their machine that can change pee into coffee. Let's continue with Solar Trictionary. What is plasma? Let's pick answer 3. A special tonic that gives you the power of flight. Wrong again. What a stupid game. It says the sun is made out of plasma. Prove it NASA. It's time for another break. This time Isa is gonna explain you all about orbits. The Moon is Earth's natural satellite. But does the Moon really go round the Earth? Or does the Earth go round the Moon? The answer is a mixture of both. With the Earth and the Moon, they're actually both in orbit, around their common centre of mass. But what do we mean by that? These two tennis balls are of equal mass. Watch what happens when I throw them in the air. I've now got two more tennis balls, but with one big difference. This one is filled with lead. Now watch what happens when I throw this combination in the air. This experiment is a big fail. It's just falling down to the floor. Next question. What is solar wind? Answer 1. What ancient Roman astronauts used to propel their sailboats through space? Did they have sailboats in space? Whoa. That is probably not the answer. Maybe it's what happens when the sun eats too many beans. Uh, that's also not gonna be the answer. The name of a 1980s heavy metal rock band. Right, that's the answer. I used to go to their concerts all the time. They made great music. Damn great music.
Their website is solarwindfusion.com. It seems like NASA doesn't know about them because apparently it's wrong again. This game is so stupid. I really need another break. You know, Mike, this guy used to be a Navy diver, so he's one of the best divers out here. He's got all this Navy experience. He was a chief petty officer in the Navy. That would make that would make sense that you have a Navy guy Perfect. diving here. Right. Yeah. What do you want, an Army guy diving? They don't. They have, I don't think they have any divers. Do they have divers in the Army? I hope not. <laughs> Mike, yes. you wouldn't happen to be a Navy guy as well. I'm a Navy you? guy. I'm a retired Perfect. Navy guy, yeah. like like Alan here. He's a retired Navy guy too. All right. Oh, sorry, I'm not allowed to show this. Instead, NASA has sent me this clip about space coffee. You know there's more space in your life than you think. In fact, in Washington, D.C., two former Marines opened Compass Coffee, a local coffee shop and roaster that uses NASA technology to brew the perfect cup of coffee. Uh, it makes my life better when I drink a really good cup of coffee and to know that NASA technology was involved in making this cup and adding to its quality, I'm, I'm a happy camper. PID, Proportional Integral Derivative, is something NASA developed and really mastered the technology of. We use it for consistency and precision in, in a couple different areas of the business. I hope they don't use water from the ISS to make coffee. Before we do the last question, I have another important message. NASA wants to grow potatoes on Mars. NASA and the Peru-based International Potato Center will start cultivating potatoes in Mars-like conditions. I was thinking, it's good to know. But you probably don't care. Last question, what is solar weather? I'm just gonna go for the last answer. It's an indication that there might be life on another planet. Probably reptilians. And it's wrong. I wanted to be a space place solar champion. And I failed horribly. Maybe I should go back to school and learn about the globe again. This video is actually of some of the things I'm going to talk about today. It's from a little company called ERA outside Baltimore, working in the mid-1960s. They are one of the pioneers in the development of the technique of working underwater for practicing EVA. And this shows, video shows some of that early work with an airlock. And the pictures that follow show more of this work that's going to be, that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in my introductory PowerPoint. Uh, here's a, somebody coming out of, the, of an airlock. You, they're wearing a so-called Mark IV uh, arrowhead suit, and, and these are some of the tests that took place outside Baltimore in the mid-60s. They moved on to using a Gemini suit. Uh, this is one of the founders, who I'll talk about more in a minute, of ERA. Uh, Scott Carpenter working underwater with a, with a, with a test section for uh, Skylab, and you can see the Skylab module just outside here. Uh, and this, these pictures are from Gemini 12 and Gemini 9 simulations that took place. This is Gene Cernan, uh, the astronaut, and then Gene Cernan working underwater. Uh, and here's Ed Buzz Aldrin in, uh, in Baltimore in about 19, November 1966, and shows him getting into the water and working underwater. This is really the first time, and I'll come back to this, the first time that walking in space was really trained and astronauts were trained to do it. And then you see here some of the Apollo era. So once Houston had its own tank in, 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 in 1967, it began working on the underwater training. And for the later Apollo missions, they had to go outside and retrieve film from the service module. This shows a tank. That, uh, and then uh, the, the construction of a new facility, which I'll again mention in my talk. And uh, this is the, the second Houston facility. And then we have here some of the training that took place in the shuttle era underwater for working in the shuttle payload bay. And, uh, and then for going outside, this is, of course, Bruce McCandless uh, in, in space for MMU. And finally, at the end of this video, you see a little bit of the training for the Hubble repair missions. And this is a video from uh, the uh, training for the last Hubble repair mission. And if you go right outside this gallery, you can see 
the instruments removed from the Hubble, and you can see much more about this. And also within this gallery, there's, some, there's, there's, a, there's information and artifacts related to the working in space by the astronauts on, on, uh, on the Hubble research. Do other countries have similar training facilities for, the, for their astronauts? Uh, said an online viewer. Absolutely. In fact, uh, in 1980, the Russians built their own so-called hydro lab, which they use to train for uh, their space stations and now train for the Russian cosmonauts to work on ISS. And then in more recent times, the Japanese built a tank, the Europeans built a tank, the, and now the Chinese built a tank. And so the Chinese actually have their own manned space program, and they have their own small stations they've been launching, and they've actually already had uh, Chinese astronauts going outside. So yeah. Every, that's it's become a, NASA really is the pioneer of this, but it's going around the world, or it has gone around the world.